All right, hello everyone, and welcome to the 11th session of Amalthea. I only really have the one announcement, and that is uh, next week with uh, Easter Sunday, uh, we will be taking off. So we will not be meeting on the 20th, but we will return on the 27th. Uh, other than that, uh, I think we're just going to go ahead and jump right in because we have a uh, quote-unquote action-packed uh, guest-filled session. So, Mirthrin, I believe you have the opening log today. Mm-hmm. Once I get to the log to remind myself what the start date was. Come on, roll 20. <clears throat> Captain's log, star date 62991.7. With the return of the Amalthea to the Suthia system, the Gamma Vanguard is as close to normal as it's been since we entered the wormhole. We've been acting as liaison between the Ashran and the Mimirissa, who have been very welcoming, all things considered. There's even been talk of the Ashran setting up a more permanent settlement on Suthia itself. Still, I'm wary of asking the Marissa any more favours. Helping them break the siege of their planet and become a space-faring civilization can only go so far, after all. And the search for an appropriate world to offload the surviving Tal Shiar still hasn't turned up anything. It's been nearly two months at this point, any longer or we might have to start rebuilding the Dideridex. In better news, Dragon Squad is due to arrive soon with the second convoy of specialists, including someone who might have an idea for how to get the Amalthea back to Federation space eventually. I only hope the specialist from the Symbiote Commission can get Skull back to normal. End log. Alrighty. So, uh, our first scene is going to be the one between uh, the uh, the Marissa Ambassador and the... Oh, one second. I love it when those jets sneak up on me. Uh, so between uh, the Ashram Ambassador and the Marissa Ambassador. So Mirthrin, uh, you're mostly just providing the quote-unquote brass for the meeting. And uh, di Diplomatic Specialist Zareed uh, is also present. Um, so yeah, uh, right now they are just wrapping up their conversation. And uh, Ambassador Aserial, whose name you should now be able to see. Uh, Ambassador Aserial says to Lena... And it is with great honor that we would be happy to take over your breeding grounds for these tribble you speak of. And Ambassador Lena uh, dips their head and says, This is acceptable. We will endeavor to find a suitable place for you and your species. And uh, they both sort of, uh, you know... I, you know, they don't have mouths, so it's hard to really get a gauge for smiling, but, you know, there's a general feeling of contentment in the room. And uh, it's at that moment, ah, moment Mirthrin, um, that you notice with your empathic abilities uh, that there is... There's something that Lena, the Marissa ambassador, is not saying. Uh, almost as if they're holding something back, but you can't tell if it's for good or bad. Mm hmm. So, Merth Merthra will sort of like just e essentially project a brief bit of quizzical quizzicalness at, at Lena before just going back to normal. The ambassador doesn't seem to respond, or at least not in a way that you're aware of. Um, and the ambassadors, you know, share a few uh, share a few more pleasantries. Uh, and then uh, they take their leave, leaving just you and Zareed uh, to sort of wrap up uh, whatever uh, extra sort of out-of-meeting notes you wanted to handle. Captain, uh, the, the aquatic, the aquatic uh, this has been a very long and challenging uh, debate, especially because aquatic species language tends to be fairly musical and long drawn out, but... I will be happy to get into the sonic shower after this. You know, on, on the surface of things, it looked like they reached an agreement. Uh, I feel like the Marissa ambassador was holding something back, though. Not entirely sure what. Yes, the I've been getting that sense the same. My chats with the with their uh, queen has been very productive, but at the same time, there's part of their oceans 
or their history that they're not telling us. But it's not our place to pry, is it, sir? Every species, every species has dark patches they'd rather not volunteer. That is true. I will be sure to keep an eye open and let you know if I catch wind of anything. I mean, as long as they're not planning to turn the Ashran into a secondary farm source, I think we're fine. Well, they have enough tribbles now to last at least four or five generations. Can you believe that there's a small section of their species that is now going back to their original food source out of protest? Hmm. Well, uh, as, lo as long as it doesn't lead to civil war, I'm uh, assuming we'll be fine. Agreed. If there's nothing else, Captain, I'd like to abscond to my quarters and get a good night's rest before I have to don that Federation issued dry suit again. <sighs> well, underwater is underwater is novel for the first few days, but after that, ugh. and yeah, uh, right on cue, Captain. Uh, you get a calm from uh, Ensign Hamasi on the bridge, and she says, uh, "Captain Murthren, sir, uh, you wanted to know when Dragon Squad was arriving." Yes, please. Thank you. I'm on my way to the bridge. So we actually uh, would it be the bridge or the hangar or wherever we meet Dragon Squad. Uh, I mean that's entirely up to you. Uh, you could uh, you know sort of communicate with them on the bridge. You could go to Starbase Alexandria. You could do it in the hangar. It's really just wherever you would prefer. Uh, let, let's meet them as they unload in the hangar. Alrighty. So uh, you head down to the flight deck. Where, uh, yeah, after about five, ten minutes, you notice that the, uh, I believe we called it the Radiance, uh, the USS Radiance, uh, swoops on in and lands very gracefully, uh, in the, uh, space reserved for it. And out stepping from the Radiance is not only Dragon Squad, as I mess with tokens here, give me a moment, uh, out steps, uh, an Arcadian, and a Trill, uh, both in Starfleet uniform. And I just have to find what I did with you, Mirthrin. There you are. All right, so of course, uh, anyone among Dragon Squad, feel free to chip into the conversation, but I imagine that uh, Vinleth, uh, you're first off the boat, so you would get to Mirthrin first. Yeah, out of character, do I know what a... Uh... Uh, what was it? Was it again? Arcadian. Uh, so Do I know what an Arcadian is? Yeah, so out of character, the Arcadians showed up in one of the old Star Trek movies. Um, they had these really goofy big heads that were just, you know, foam and whatnot. Uh, so I did a quote-unquote J.J. Abrams reskin where it looks, you know, not just like someone in a big foam head. Um, so in general, they look like, um, I, I would say almost like a... Uh, how to describe this if you can imagine a, a normal humanoid with a sort of bluish green skin and not quite horns that sweep back uh in almost like tendril fashion along their head and they have very vibrant green hair uh but otherwise they also have webbed fingers and webbed uh, feet if they were to take off their boots uh, and they have what appears to be a protective sort of coating on what skin is exposed. Um, but they are otherwise humanoid in nature. All right. Hey. Vinleth will step out of the compartment and salute the captain. Captain Murthy. Captain Murthy. Reporting, reporting as duty. Ah, reporting back to the, uh, to the Amalthea with uh, Specialist Leros of the... Uh, Trill Symbiosis Commission and Chief Specialist Michelle, a uh, warp theory specialist. Greetings. Welcome, welcome to the Malthia and welcome to the Gamma Quadrant. So, uh, uh, Specialist Leros wastes no time and actually steps forward and says, I mean not to cut pleasantry short, Captain, but where might I find my patient? Uh, yes, we'll get you there straight away. Um, Follow me this way. Uh, Michelle, uh, do you already know where you're headed? 
Uh, Michelle kind of looks around, looks back at Dragon Squad and says, Well, uh, I did want to do a uh, bit more diagnostics of the Radiance. Uh, I also have my own ship out there. Uh, I came in on the Radiance. Uh, it would be good if I could bring in my own ship, as I have quite a number of materials on it that uh, would prove useful. <clears throat> Very well. Uh, fin finish check up in your own time and uh, call me when you're ready to brief me. Very good, sir. And you see, uh, you see Michelle take out a, uh, a pad and type a few things. And as you're starting to leave with uh, Leros in tow, uh, you see a very interesting looking ship. Uh, the There isn't really a class for it, uh, but this is kind of what it looks like. Sort of a bespoke science vessel. Mm -hmm. like a so it's a, very, it's a very small vessel. Um, definitely scale two, uh, about the size of a runabout, uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Um, but, uh, it flies in and parks itself, uh, all via remote. Fancy. Yep. Uh, but I'll help you go over the, the Radiance best chief. I have to readjust the warp field now that Shazay hit another micrometeor. To be fair, I was talking to her at the time. Bad net heads. Uh, Dragon Squad dismissed. I'm and Vinleth just looks at the captain, just waiting to see if there's anything that he needs, and then we'll turn, turn and stride and... back to head back to her quarters. Yeah, Mercer just sort of gives her a nod of acknowledgement. Okay. So, Very well, Leros. Uh, Miss Skull is this way. Okay. Mister or Miss? Uh, I said Miss. Okay. Uh, well, the you know my question is whether or not are you taking them to Ventu, or are you taking them to Skull the Admiral? Uh, Skull. Okay. Because he's in to his patient. So. All right. Just making sure. All right. So. Uh, with you guys in sick bay, put you guys in here. Uh, Prayer is here, just not here. Here, so if we need him, I'll chip in for him. He, uh, he's around. Uh, yeah, he's around. Uh, but let's see. And yeah, uh, you take Specialist Leros to sick bay, and immediately uh, he wastes no time in stepping past Lieutenant Commander Drake. Uh, not even giving Drake the time of day, almost. Like, doesn't even acknowledge his presence unless Drake physically interposes himself. Um, and starts scanning and otherwise observing what he can of the Admiral. Um, with Mirthrin in the room, mm -hmm. uh, Skull is giving off a sense of recognition and a little bit of... What's the word I'm looking for? Apprehension. Um, um, and I'll, I'll, uh, piggyback on that. And until Mirthrin walks in the room, Drake is giving off annoyance Annoy and then less annoyance once Mirthrin walks in behind the specialist. So Mirthrin will come in. All right. Uh, Skull, Drake, this is Specialist Leros from the Symbiote Commission. Ah, uh, Mr. Leros, I have, I seem to remember you. And Welcome. I would, of course, give you the full grace and welcome that someone of my stature should have, but this sick bay is so poorly decorated and room service has been atrocious. If it wasn't so, as you can, so as you can see, Skull is better than they were a day or two ago, but uh, we still need some help. Yes, I can tell immediately that this is not the correct iteration of the symbiote. Tell me, have you passed through any temporal anom anomalies recently? So Mothran actually has to stop and think for a little. No, we're fairly certain this is the um, restoration that that did the that did this. Hmm. Well, there are a few things we can try. Uh, one of them, as you may know, yeah. there is a process that the trill, the join trill, do on occasion where we, quote-unquote, farm out past hosts 
to a uh, temporary visit with the current host at a character I, I'm blanking on the name, but... Yeah, I know um, the one. But uh, this process of moving the memories and personalities to another host, this may help the symbiote, uh, shall we say, recover itself to the normal uh, situation. Now, that said, this would be a very involved process, and I would need... And he consults his notes. Uh, correct me out of character if I'm wrong, but Skull has been around for four different hosts? Yeah, four different hosts. Okay. Then uh, Lero says, I would need three volunteers that would be willing to take on the symbiote past lives. Uh, there. Met- Metron sort of look at Command Drake and go, well, we've at least got two. Uh, who would you recommend? Well, uh, as Tizé here is uh, a female, I would recommend a, uh, a female do it. Uh, really, any species will do, really. Uh, well, maybe not Ferengi. Uh, they tend to be weird about this sort of thing. Uh, you know, a, a male or anything in between would work. It's just that usually I have found that if the genders match up, it's a, it's a less, quote-unquote, weird experience for everyone involved. Hmm. Uh, out of character, I can't remember uh, which... Actually, no. Oh, it would probably have to be Betu, wouldn't it? I mean, it can literally be any female character on the ship, or really, if you want to have any character on the ship, it's just sort of recommended that it also be female. Uh... You have one on the bridge, Captain. Or there's or also there's all... Cam. Uh, actually, Cam pro- uh, yeah, Cam's probably known Skull the longest. Shatsu also served with him quite a while. True. Well, <laughs> let, 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 let's ask them, see if any of them would be comfortable with it. Do y'all, <clears throat> sorry, do y'all know the worst part of all this? If this works, I'm going to have to cancel my farewell concert. I know that I Captain know Beckett Captain. was really looking forward to hearing me sing. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, well li- life is a series of small tragedies sometimes. <laughs> and it is at that point that apparently, Mirthrin, you are a, uh, a very busy man because you get another hail from Ensign Hamasi and she says... Uh, sir, you wanted to know when the Red November had returned from its scouting mission? Uh, yes, thank you. I'll be I'll be up to the bridge shortly. Very good, sir. All right, uh, right Lyrus, Drake, if you were fine here? Yes, uh, we will begin preparing for the Zentara ritual. I looked it up, it's the Zentara. Uh, we can do the Zentara pretty much immediately, but, uh, all we really need is a stretch of time where nothing, shall we say, perilous is happening, as I've heard stories about how much trouble you seem to get into on a daily basis. Mm, hourly. hourly. <clears throat> yeah, uh, maybe make that short list of people all from the uh, people who don't need to be on the bridge during a red alert. Um, now, um, and... Sorry. Go ahead and drink... Drake stops because Tessa's talking. Ah. <clears throat> now, Mr. Drake, uh, he, uh, and Skull looks at Lyros, gives him a bit of a hard glare. Would you mind giving the two of us trail some privacy, please? Uh, of course. Um, specialist, I'll be right outside if you need me. Of course. <clears throat> um, and Drake will follow Mirthrin out. Okay. So, uh, you two step out, and And, yeah, you're alone, uh, Admiral, you are alone with, uh, Specialist Leros. Uh, Mr. Leros, I seem you were the chap who decided to help me out a little bit the last time Skull Barton decided to take a bit of a vacation. Yes, uh, we thought, uh, the Symbios Commission and I thought it would be best if you had someone familiar. Yes. Last time you we ch- last time you were here, I seem to remember that you recommended euthanizing the host to save the symbiote. I trust that's not going to have to happen again. 
Mm, not quite, no. Uh, in fact, uh, we have been ordered uh, to not consider that an option. Yes, I appreciate uh, I appreciate that a great deal, and my accent does noticeably change at the moment. Okay. Uh, I do really appreciate that. Despite Barton's mm, fragile personality, I've grown quite attached to him. You know, Leros uh, notes a few things on his pads and says, well, we'll do our best to get Barton back up and running. I appreciate that. Now, if you don't mind, specialist, and he reverts the accent almost second thought, I do have my Teze persona to maintain. If they realize that the Skull symbiote was actually driving the body, well, that would be a bit of a problem now, wouldn't it, for everyone? Indeed. Ah, chop, chop. All right. Um, and real quick, because it was what I was going to say a second ago, uh, mm -hmm. when Drake and Mirthrin walk outside, um, <laughs> Captain, uh, two quick points I'd like to run past you. <clears throat> yep, and he sort of like indicates to walk with him as he heads out the door towards the bridge. And Drake will follow. Um, if we're going to do this trill ritual... Uh, I think we should pick two people besides yourself and myself. One being you need to be in the command of this fleet, with all due respect. And two, uh, other than you, I probably, and, well, the Admiral, I probably have more security codes in my head than anybody else does. I don't know if no, that would no, necessarily no. be good for somebody else to drive me, and he puts up air quotes uh, with all so that with kind all of that information. Kind of that is a fair point. Mm. And my first thought would be Panek, but uh, mm. I I'm hesitant to try that. Uh, Cam and Shatsu are probably good choices. Um, well, I mean, what about... I don't... I, I honestly... Uh, my ignorance is showing on this. I don't know how it would work, but would Prayer be a good candidate? Seeing as how he is also you? true? Or would that or make would him that a bad um, out of character, I forget. Prayers bonded, right? I believe so, yes. Yeah. So you could not use them for this. No, prayer wouldn't work. Uh, something about already having a symbiote messes with the process. Mm. Um, Locke might not be a bad choice. He's always at a loose end. True. Um, and uh, we would need one other male host. Um preferably somebody not in a command position uh, my opinion mm. Darval? Mm. Darval wouldn't be a bad choice True as a, uh, He certainly strikes me as someone who'd be uh, up for the challenge shall we say mm. Yes, especially if we tell him that there's uh, adrenaline to be had But oh, I, I uh, wanted to I make want... those two points to you and, and at least put the uh, thought in your head. Well, I'll contact people individually when and as we have time. In the meantime, though, I'll, we need to check in with the Red November, see if they've had any luck. Yes, Captain. I'll uh, stay down here in sick bay unless you need me. Yep. And brother heads off. Okay. Oh, Mr. Drake, we finished our chat. Feel free to come back in. <laughs> All right, so Mirthrin, uh, when you get back up to the bridge, uh, you see that uh, Captain Sim is already showing up on the hollow feed, and Jester, uh, take it away. Um, I'm muted. All right. We're just back. We've been patrolling for oh, a little over two weeks now, Fortnite covering area. We headed to our ports, cords, covered about 60, almost 70 light years. Um, thankfully, we encountered no caretakers and detected none even on long-range sensors. So it's, it seems like we are at the edge of their space now. It is. Or at least there's a sliver there where there's nothing. There's a surprising amount of ocean planets around here. 
giving our scientific crew quite a bit of a, a field day guessing why there's such a predominance of ocean life in this particular ocean worlds in this particular region. Overabundance of water, sort of terraforming project. We have lots of theories. Um, unfortunately, this means we've only found one planet that might conceivably work for housing our Romulan friends. It's uh, pretty distant, about 30 light years away, a class L planet, so it's barely habitable, not very much life on it. It's, it looks like it once held a bit more life, but it's since become tidally locked and flipped over on its axis a bit, so one side is always facing towards its sun, but there's a fairly sizable habitable band where they can live. But that seems to have really hindered um, the life on the planet, and there's only some small, um, small plants and ocean life, but not much surface, uh, no, no large surface animals yet, so they don't have to worry about facing any horrible predators or diseases that affect uh, mammalian. Hmm. Well, we'll probably need to think a fair amount of resources into getting them a stable colony set up, but once it's actually set up, we'll more or less be able to leave them to their own devices. Yeah, it's an uh, uh, oxygen, nitrogen, argon atmosphere, which works out nice. Um, decently fertile soil, lots of plant. It seems to be earth before land life really flourished. So they sh if they, we give them some cultures of seeds, they should be able to grow their own crops. Uh, get a, a lovely or Gagarian settlement going. Short order. Uh, Sorry, out of game. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that the uh, Dragon Squad also brought back was another two industrial replicators. Mm -hmm. That Useful. factors into decisions. Makes it a lot easier to get them set up. How they fit that on the radiance? Very well. Carefully. You know, one industrial replicator was just needed, and then it replicated the other industrial replicator as soon as it came onto the shuttle bay. <laughs> uh, industrial replicators all the way down. <laughs> Just like Tribbles. <clears throat> Speaking of... Yes. No, that, that, that was the wrong adjective. <laughs> that aside... I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for who, who, who was talking next. Probably just between you and Sim. I was mentioning something out of game. I apologize. Yeah, no, that's all right. Uh, yeah, that's I'm, I'm, them an industrial I've, I've actually lost track of where we were. Yeah, so if we get them one of a. I've, I've just arrived, so I haven't uh, been debriefed about the, the newcomers from the Alpha. If we do have oh, another yes. replicator, they should be able to easily grow some algae supplies for some quick food resources and produce, use the silicus of the various soils and of the, the, the fairly sizable land belt to sustain themselves. They should have no problem building a, an adequate colony out of the remains of their Derodex. Mm. Of course, we still need to, we, we'd still have to tow the Derodex 30 light years. And, but again, there is, um, since there's no caretakers in that region uh, that we detected even with like extreme long-range sensors, they should have, uh, they should be unmolested or unthreatened by that, especially with, with us here. So it's, it's, not, we're still marooning them on a planet, but they should have a decent life. Better than mo many colonists have. <clears throat> eh, who knows, maybe the Romulan Empire will come round to pick up their descendants at some point. Enjoy having a nice foothold in this part of the galaxy. Mm. Right, so let's see. That's that taken care of. We'll work out the precise logistics of arranging that later. And now that means the next item on the agenda is... Well, as fate would have it, uh, as uh, you kind of, you know, turn... You know, you finish your conversation with Sim up and uh, Sim disappears from the hollow screen. Uh, the entire ship, the entire Amalfia, uh, shudders for a moment and the ship automatically goes to red alert. Uh, sensor scan, what the heck just hit us? All right. Uh, I would say that Rizazo or Hamasi can do this role. Uh, Rizazo would be doing a reason security. 
Uh, Hamasi would be doing a reason science. And again, the ship would assist with the same sort of thing. It would be a sensor security or a sensor science. Uh, the difficulty here is a one. Could Freepok be doing a scan of the internal uh, structure of the ship to see if we took any damage from that? Uh, I would say that uh, you would just know that you didn't take any damage from it, but let's see what they turn up with their scan first. Um, I'll fire one off and do the ship. Okay, okay. yeah, if someone could get the uh, ship. For the ship, it will be a sensor security, please. One, one success. We got our one. I can roll your mouth here. All right. Security. All right. So there's a uh, success. You get a momentum, and almost immediately, what you find is that uh, there was a explosion of proto matter in system, uh, far enough away where it didn't damage anything, but it you know it's still a proto matter explosion. And if you give me one second, I will show you on the map where that explosion oh, is. Oh, no. Sure. Captain, detecting protomat explosion. No ships were detected at long range. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm no, sorry, no. did you just say protomatter explosion? Affirmative protomatter explosion. Detecting visual consistent with protomatter. All right. So as uh, as you put it on screen, uh, this sort of blue question mark off here to the right, um, you know, your quote unquote camera drones fly over and, you know, however the hell view screens actually work, uh, it zooms in and you see uh, something quite startling. You see a battered and bruised Dauntless class vessel uh, that you can't read the uh, the actual what's written on the hull. But it looks like this Dauntless class vessel has seen better days. Uh, its engines are scarred. Its hull similar in nature. Uh, there's holes throughout. It really looks like whatever happened to this vessel to get it here did a number on it. Captain, that is a Dauntless <clears throat> class vessel. Does does every ship in the the fleet get that kind of like? That same thing? Yes, every single person in the fleet, including those on Starbase Alexandria and Ashram Station, and your Gamma 1 mining outpost. So, Captain, you're getting a lot of hails asking what the hell was that? Um, and, uh, yeah, Beckett will hail also, yes. Yep. D tell them to stand by. Try to open a channel to the- try to open a channel to that Dauntless. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's have Hamasi do this. Actually, no. Let's have Darval do it because I think Darval is better suited for this. All right. Uh, so Darval, I would like you to roll me a. God, what is it? A sensors. Uh, hold on. I'll look it up. It is a. Actually, it's a control engineering, and the ship will assist you with communications and engineering. And the difficulty is a zero. Control plus engineering. Uh, which do I have a focus? Let's see. Not particularly. Okay. All right. So that's two momentum already. Uh, who's got the ship? I guess I can roll ship. All right. Do I still have that window open? Uh, comms engineering for the ship. You got it, boss. Comms engineering. Very nice. That's a total of three nice. momentum. So, uh, Darval, you do open up a channel. Uh, you're not getting a reply back. Uh, however, if you give me a momentum, I will give you an additional piece of information. I would like that piece of information. Yeah. I'll give you a momentum. You notice that the uh, warp core of this Dauntless class vessel is destabilizing and could be in the process of a warp core breach. Captain, I'm detecting a severe instability of their warp core. It's potent possibly there. It's interfering with their communication system. Recommend, Recommend dispatching the Ophion or anyone really okay. to 
intercept and beam any survivors off immediately. Agreed. Ophion, move to intercept. We'll move the Amalthea in afterwards to collect evacuees. Right. Ophion here. We will move in currently. Okay. So, uh, the Ophion flies on over, and uh, I guess my question is... Uh, ooh, that's a bit big. I'll, I'll shrink it down. Um, but yeah, the Ophion flies over, and uh, you are more or less wondering... Uh, what's going on here? So in the process of the Ophion zooming over, uh, did you want to do anything, Panek? Or really anyone on the Ophion crew? I mean... I, I definitely want to uh, order Locke to keep a constant scan on their instability. Yeah, it's scan for survivors, life signs. Try to establish an early lock for transporters to get people off in case it does blow. Okay. Sick bay preps for triage? Yeah. Yep. Uh, Panek to Cranston. Go ahead, Captain. See if you can't reconfigure the tractor beam to emit a stabilizing field around the Dauntless. Uh, working on it, Captain. All right. So, a uh, few things are going to happen here at once. Uh, so, let's do the sensor scan first uh, from the Ophion. So, uh, Locke, if you could give me a reason and a science, please. And the Ophion will assist you with a sensor science. The difficulty here was going to be a 2, but last I checked, the Ophion has advanced sensors, so it's a difficulty 1. Which means uh, you get 2 momentum from that. Very nice. Nice. Uh, so, even more strange, uh, you're only detecting 2 life signs aboard. And one of them is located in engineering, and another in what might be a science lab. Okay. From my there? Go ahead. From my scans, can I tell if the uh, the instability is related to their warp engine or like the, the possible quantum slipstream? And is it on? Uh, I will say if you give me a momentum, I will answer that question. Science officer, free question. Oh, free question. All right. Uh, in that case, I will say yes. Uh, it is probably related to a combination of both the quantum slipstream drive destabilizing and the warp core at the same time. And that's probably why it, you know, caused the explosion. Um, really, it's a miracle that uh, the ship is holding together at this point. Whoever is in engineering is either doing a very good job or a very poor one. Who's air operations uh, chief on the bridge? It's still tier. Uh, let me. I thought that was um, Prier. That's Prier's character. Um, I think. Yes. The monotone uh, guy. Yes, Chief Pity Officer Mido. Uh, Mido, are we able to establish a transporter lock on those two life forms? Uh, I mean, I could try, sir, but uh, it's it would be very difficult. There's a lot of interference coming off from the core. I I might be able to beam someone to there, but getting them back is really the problem. Uh, maybe someone with a transporter enhancer could go over. Uh, I can Captain, give it a shot. It's, uh, I would like to go if you could beam me directly into engineering. It's whoever engineers um, keeping it together. They might need some help, and I am the most qualified to deal with problems with quantum. Take Cranston with you and a couple of pattern enhancers. We'll hold at maximum distance. I can uh, do. Okay, then uh, out of game, out of sync. Do we? Uh, still want me to make the roll to try to tractor beam and hold them together before I beam over there? Uh, I will say you've made the modifications, okay. uh, but when the tractor beam actually activates, that's when we'll do the roll for it. Okay, sounds good. Um, so yeah, just to be sure, I've got Cranston lock. Is anyone else going over? Uh, um, yeah, if there's only two life signs, I'll head over. Um, Lut Heavy Rend will volunteer for Medical do on site medical assistance. Okay. Uh, might as well send Zeb just in case there's something to shoot at. Okay. Never know. They could See that instability, Zeb? Shoot it. Right. <laughs> shoot the <clears> one in doubt. Yeah. When in doubt, send Zeb. All right. So, uh, the four of you uh, 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 kitted out with transporter enhancers, you beam directly to the Dauntless Engineering Bay. 
And what strikes you immediately is that there are consoles and sparks flying everywhere. Um, it really looks like this place has seen better days. Uh, but probably the most important thing that you notice is what appears to be a uh, rather interesting looking woman. And uh, Soup, if you could reintroduce Havoc for us, because uh, some people might not be familiar with her. I'm completely unfamiliar. Uh, we seem to have lost sound. Yeah, I was going to say, you're lighting up, but we're not getting any sound. That generally happens around me. For some ah, reason, this expert take me. Yep, it works now. But, uh, Lieutenant Commander Mari Havoc Johnson freed Borg and Chief Engineer upon this ship. For everyone who forgot that. Would we be used I... to a freed Borg? I mean, um, I'm pretty uh, sure there's some freed Borg among the Gamma Vanguard's crew. Right, yeah. Like, there are, quote-unquote, ex-Borg uh, in Starfleet, not only from Worf 359, but uh, from the whole incident uh, a few years ago in-game. Uh, so they're around. It's just unusual to see them. Yeah, for a split second, Zeb has raised his phaser, but then lowers it when he sees the Starfleet uniform. Locks, yeah, gestures to Zeb that it's okay. Uh... Yes, I've, I've met the commander. And yeah, uh, Havoc, uh, you would be able to notice, or at least take notice, that four people have beamed into your engineering bay. Alright, who are you and which one of you is good at fixing a breach? Uh, that would be me, Lieutenant Commander. Uh, I'm your man. Uh, where do you need me? This is your engineering. Just tell me what you want. Well, we just... I think we just got out of a fight with an alien species. So uh, I, I immediately point at the uh, pretty much screwed uh, warp core. I need to make sure that does not explode. Uh, I'm on it. Okay, Chief, you handle the warp core. I will attend to the QSD. You got it, XO. It's a uh, havoc. It's uh, interesting to see you again. Have we met, actually? Yet, he means. Well, I don't want to say the yet. <laughs> mm, I, I look him down. I'm going to hazard a no just to be safe. I nod at him, giving the yes, yes, we have met, but I'm not saying. Sure. Sorry, Miss Miss Havoc. Do you know if any the, pers the person on the bridge, do they need medical attention? I have been down here just trying to keep this thing from exploding, from killing everyone. I've just been here alone. I'm just going to look at Locke and nod up to the... Nod up. Permission to leave, sir. Yeah, yeah. Secure the bridge. I'm right Take behind the... you, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. And uh, Zeb and I bolt to the bridge. Alright, so you two uh, scamper off. Now, we're going to handle the engineering part of this first, and then we'll deal with the... Uh, other two. Uh, so, there are two ways you guys can go about uh, dealing with this breach that's in progress. Um, you could try and stabilize the reactor. Uh, this would be an extended task uh, with work 8, magnitude 3, resistance 2, base difficulty 3, and I'll type that out in a second. Um, if you succeed at this extended task, you prevent the reactor from exploding. And it's probably going to be a daring or control engineering for everyone involved. Um, now that said, what really limits the extended task is that every single time you guys make an attempt, I get to roll a challenge die. So for example, your first attempt, I roll one challenge die. The second attempt, I roll two challenge die. The third attempt, I roll three challenge die. And if I roll any effects any effects the breach the rack the, or the reactors will explode uh not only damaging the ship um but possibly f fatally injuring you know not kill but fatally injuring or lethally injury your characters in the process so it's very important that you balance your resources here carefully um so that's option one option two is you could attempt to eject the reactor. And that would be a daring engineering at a difficulty of four. 
And if you succeed, the reactor is successfully dumped. Uh, and when it explodes, um, it is not going to harm you or the ship. But the downside is, is that once that reactor explodes, the only thing that you can do to fix that is literally putting in at a shipyard to fix it. Well, uh, so the, the, the challenge dice thing is only if we fail. Uh, no, the challenge dice is rolled regardless of how much work that you've made. It is quite literally a ticking time bomb. Oh, that's uh, I'm let's play bold. Uh, yeah, I'm 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 like an extended task machine. Mm -hmm. Um, so I honestly think that Havoc and I can pull it off if we do the extended task. I'll I'll run on that. Cool. Um, and we currently have five momentum. Yep. So let me uh, let me type out uh, this for you. So work tracks. You're Thankfully, ready. I got uh, nick of time and cautious engineering. So if we roll any complications during the extended task, I can just burn those away. Cool. Uh, I also have nick of time, miracle worker, spirit of discovery, and I have two medals that also help me with engineering tasks. Yeah, I have a medal hey. that helps the uh, momentum slipstream. So, um, I will probably burn through my determinations, but yeah, we're, this is happening. All right. So I need to know who is taking the lead here. Uh, since, since I would note that this guy has the medals and all that stuff and he's a machine at this, I think I'll let him do it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, control engineering. I'm at a 15. Yeah. Kratz in first roll. Okay. okay. And... Control engineering. I'm at 17, though. Oh boy. Um. We'll, that actually we'll changes some things. <laughs> All right. Well, I will say, uh, if and correct me if I'm wrong, I think the difference is is that he has miracle worker where havoc does not. Yeah, that does make a difference. Uh, so I yeah, think cause... I think the miracle worker should go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. All right. So we we're looking at uh, control and engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, difficulty uh, difficulty three, three. Uh, however I, I will say that uh, if more than one person assists the difficulty will increase to four okay so um, you've got to be careful which one of you is doing the assisting so I think Havoc assist, assist this first time because they will have, they'll say that they're stabilizing the warp engine first so Havoc and uh, Grandson can take over while locks off on the side QSDA Okay. And a focus for this. Sweet. Okay. Um, then, yeah. Uh, I will... Um, I'll spend three uh, momentum to get four dice. Alright. Uh, applicable focus, yes. Yeah. Wow. Just wow. Uh, so it was a difficulty three, which means you get you are capped on momentum. Very nice. And yeah, if you could now roll me uh, seven challenge dice, please, Mr. Cranston. But that's what, right. seven successes? Yeah. Um, and if I... Because of Miracle Work, if I achieve a breakthrough and roll at least one effect on a challenge dice, I get a second breakthrough. Yep, so quite literally, if you roll eight work, well, okay. Uh, if you manage to do eight work after resistance, you will complete the extended task one-shotted. Miracle worker for the win. <laughs> okay, All right. so now. you did get the effect, but you need to come up with four more work uh, after resistance, or I get to roll a challenge die. Okay. So the resistance is two, so two of those will get dropped off. I'm definitely spending momentum to reroll those zeros. Okay. Um, trying to think. Um, I can't spend determination to get extra successes on challenge dice, correct? Uh, well, if I remember correctly, uh, you know, let's let's actually pull up the extended chart. I keep meaning to actually put it into the stupid thing, and I never do. Let's see. 
I think you can, yes, uh, you can spend uh, one momentum for plus one work before reductions for resistance. Uh, you can also spend one repeatable uh, piercing to ignore up to two resistance for the task. Uh, and that is also one. And the only thing you can't redo is the reroll. The reroll you can only do once. Okay, so I'm, uh, I see somebody's already spent the momentum or the reroll. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, then uh, I'll, I'll spend two more momentum to get rid of the resistance. Okay. Um, which leaves me at straight challenge dice roll. Correct? Uh, you could, well, re-roll the three zeros first, and then we'll explore what else we can do. All right. Okay. So you are currently doing seven work, and if you give me one more momentum, you will do eight work and thus completing the task. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Okay, so you're down to two momentum. So, uh, Havoc, it's maybe a little bit embarrassing, but Cranston works like, well, a miracle worker. Um, even though, uh, you know, you have been the chief engineer of this ship for really uh, quite a long time at this point, uh, Cranston is, you know, takes to it naturally. Uh, um, he, oh, go ahead. Never spit on natural talent. For flavor, because it's Havoc in here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, Have Ren has helped me with this, when he goes to the console, he opens up a panel on his prosthetic arm and pulls out two connectors and plugs them into the... To the uh, control panel he's working at mm -hmm. to help him with either speed or knowledge of what's going on. Right. I figured it'd be a cool flavor being Havoc standing right there too. Yeah, I think it's cool flavor. And, uh, uh, you know, with this interface, yeah, the reactors are actually both stabilize uh, very quickly. At, see, Lieutenant Commander, that was your problem. You just needed to hit it hard enough and everything will work just fine with a little progressive maintenance. I point towards the two sledgehammers near the door. You think I haven't tried that before? Uh, I, I guess you just gotta learn where, where you actually need to hit them. Hit them just right. Works every time. Alright, so... <sighs> uh, while Havoc is pulling her hair out at that one, uh, we're gonna move to a science bay... Uh, where Morgan, uh, you are coming to, uh, as I said, uh, you find yourself in the ship's science bay, uh, and then the door opens, and in comes uh, a Klingon woman and a Lurian. A Frosian woman. Oh, Frosian, sorry. Well, I'm not familiar with either of you. State your name and serial number. Lieutenant, he Lieutenant Heavy Wren... Chief Medical Officer, USS Ophion. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Zeb, USS Ophion. And I pull out a medical tricorder and immediately start scanning you. Well, Morgan, China, brushes it open. It's like, you know, that's very kind of you, but we don't have time for that. The ship's in danger. Yes, yes, we have some engineers down below trying to get that sorted out. They'll either save us or we're all going to die in an inferno. So, either way, I'm going to scan you. Either way, I prefer I not lose my ship today. Well, if you have any options to do up here, Mr... Morgan. Uh, Commander Lucas Morgan. Ah, Commander. Well, your ship, sir. Zeb is I... setting up the uh, enhancers while they're chit-chatting. Okay. So while um, Zeb is trying to scan me and chase me around the science bay, I'm going to make my, make my way over to the comm panel and see if I could ascertain the status of the ship. Okay. So uh, what you see is not good. Uh, the ship, uh, and now this is where we actually do the name reveal, and Jave Ren and Zeb will both see this. Uh, the USS Adiona is in a very bad shape. Uh, the Adiona has suffered quite a number of breaches to its engines and sensors. Uh, the rest, the computers, the comms, the structure, uh, they are damaged as well. Uh, weapons, strangely enough, got out uh, the best. Uh, they still took a breach, but they are, uh, they are uh, pretty much everything on the ship uh, could definitely do with some fixing. 
And probably most important for you, Morgan, is that besides yourself and those in engineering, uh, there are no other crew of the Adiona aboard. Well, that's concerning. Most definitely. So I'll just to make sure to make sure I'm not going mad. I'll just go tap my com badge and just say Commander Morgan to all hands. So to anyone that, oh, go ahead, that could hear me. Say Commander Morgan to anybody that could hear me. If you're on this frequency, please respond. And yeah, uh, Havoc, you you do hear that. Have we lost Havoc? So, my headphones decide to just fo decide to start foaming up. One second. So I heard Commander Morgan finally. Yes. Immediate response: Where the bloody hell have you been? I I'm in the science lab for some reason, and these two people from uh, what'd you guys say your names were? Lieutenant Junior Grade Zeb from the USS Ophion. Heavy Ren, also Ophion. So we have crew members from the Ophion on our ship. And I know we've been through a lot of things, but the last thing I remember, I'm pretty sure I didn't break any more rules. So I don't think this one's my fault. Right. Because the person who openly made a deal with a Q is totally trustworthy. <sighs> okay. At that point, they at up that point I'm just going to cut Mari off and just say report <laughs> I mean, to be fair, so have most of Starfleet's best captains. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna. At, at this point, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna take the snark, and I'm just gonna ask her to report. All right, all right. Those those two did show up in my area as well. They showed up in my place first. We got the reactor fixed, and well, I'm still trying to figure out where exactly we are, why exactly these people are here, and. All honesty, where is the rest of our goddamn crew? Uh, let's see. Gamma Quadrant. Um, spatial Grid 74. And I have no idea where the rest of your crew are. I haven't passed uh, any bodies, if that's any uh, consolation. Okay. Uh, here comes the real question. What year is it? Uh, the start date is... I can tell you that. I forget what I had for breakfast. It is start date 6... Six two nine nine one. Six two nine nine one, sir. No, Morgan. No, 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 no. Morgan. We have a problem. We have a big problem. And at least in Morgan's head, he's just thinking to myself, "It's happening again." I hate temporal uh, mechanics. Mo Morgan, do you still have that stock of alcohol? I'm going to need a lot of it. I think we're going to have to take this one step at a time. And I think alcohol is going to come at the end of this trip. So, and I turn to the other two officers that are in the science lab with me. So, we're supposed to be the only ship out here. So, does anybody care to explain to me what, the, uh, what you guys are doing here? Apologies, I should have clarified... You're in the Gamma Quadrant of the Milky Way Galaxy. Oh, okay. Well, no, well, no, 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 no. Say, the Adonia was assigned to the Andromeda Galaxy. Yes, we're aware of that. Um, you were declared missing in action about eight months ago. Eight months ago? Well, Lieutenant, uh, I, mean, I hate to step on your toes here, but uh, I've set the enhancers up, and this might be a series of questions for someone above our rank. Yes, uh, long story short, uh, Commander, there's a space station nearby. There are several Starship Starfleet vessels in the vicinity. Your ship appears not to be in the immediate, uh, immediately going to blow up. Um, I would strongly recommend that we beam... Both you and, I'm sorry, that Borg woman's name, Havoc, out for proper debrief while we go over your vessel and get it back into some version of ship shape. I understand, but let me take care of one thing. And so, 
I turn, I uh, calms back into havoc, and I'm just saying, I'll just go ask her, is uh, our our holographic friend still operational? And I tried my, for my tried, end. Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I tried calling the intrusive guy, and yet no response. It it's like he's gone, just like everyone else. Oh, even though I hate being showed up by him, I'm going to try to attempt to activate Connery myself. All right. So the computer makes that sort of confused noise where it doesn't quite understand your request, or it's at least trying, but errors out, and the ESH does not appear. Unfortunate. All right, you two. I have a lot of questions. Take me to the people that have a lot of answers. Yes, sir. Uh... Have it ran to Mr. Locke, Command Commander Locke. Locke here, uh, sir. Commander Morgan and us, we will be beaming back to the Ophion. Okay, um, I, Lieutenant, we're continuing to handle the situation here to make sure the ship doesn't explode. I think it's odds of that are getting less and less. Uh, you can um, let the commander know that his ship should still be here when he's ready to come back. Yes, sir. And I will gesture grandiosely towards the transporter enhancers and inform Ophion that three are ready to beam out. Pinnack just nods to Mida. Right. Have them meet me in my ready room. All right. So let's go to your ready room. Have to find it. Here it is. All right. So, uh, Panek, uh, you are set up in your ready room. It used to be Skull's ready room. Uh, when you do hear a uh, chime at your door. Got the trill smell out of it. <laughs> the alcohol stench is finally clear. Uh, but yeah, I'm in. You, but, all right, so uh, in will step uh, a certain commander. As soon as I find what I did with his token. There he is. Uh, in steps a commander and hot on his tail uh, I'm going to say for sake of argument that somehow Havoc was convinced to leave uh, at least temporarily so in step uh, your two uh, well displaced uh, Starfleet officers Greetings I'm Captain Panek of the USF Ophion Gamma Vanguard and you identify yourselves please I'm Commander Lucas Morgan of the USS Adonia. Lieutenant Commander Mari Havoc Johnson. And at this point, I'm just going to attempt to give Panek a uh, look down and just ask, and ask him out loud. Have we met college, the academy? I believe circumstances do not allow me to extrapolate upon the situation in which we met, but we have. Right. I assure you. Well, it seems that you've been further displaced. The Adionia was reported missing eight months ago. Okay, so, back up. The Gamma Vanguard, the Alpha Quadrant, none of those things match with our, with our record. And I know we've been let's say, more exploratory than other vessels. But at the same time, this is a little bit out of our wheelhouse. We're supposed to be in the Andromeda Galaxy. We have a long-term mission to, uh, you know, continue and upheld. But where's, where's my crew? I unfortunately do not have these answers for you. But you are indeed in the Milky Way Galaxy within the Gamma Quadrant. The last thing I remember is that we were being attacked by a species I think the Mua called them species for. And I think that set off uh, a cascading event in our warp core. And then they breached that, the warp core, Commander. I think we may have had some interesting side effects. We did detect this, this instabilities with your QSD and a protomatter explosion when you arrived. This could have unforeseen consequences. I'm sorry, did you say protomatter? We did indeed. He said protomatter. So, 
And I'm going to turn to Havoc. What's the extent of the damage? Well, aside from the general damage to the ship, we have managed to stabilize the warp core and prevented it from exploding horribly. So, if we can get some real repairs done, I think we may be, we may be able to get the ship in full functionality again. You are within luck, if such a thing exists. Starbase Alexandria is nearby, you currently within the system. Also, I believe the Commodore would wish to speak with you. Connect to lock. Oh, wait, lock's not on the ship yet. Uh, connect to my. Oh, that's prayer, but he's not here, is he? Yeah, this is Mito. Oh. Hi. Are you able to take the Ediona under tractor? Shouldn't be any problem, Captain. Notify Cranston Lock that you are doing so, and then proceed at impulse towards the uh, Amalthea. Actually, towards uh, Alexandria. I will inform uh, Commodore Merthrin of your status. Understood, Captain. All right, and right before you make that call, so we'll finish, uh, we'll do something real quick, and then your call will come in. Uh, back on the bridge of the Amalthea, um, Captain, you get a hail from the Marissa Queen, of all things. Yep, yeah. so, an answer. So, uh, appearing in the hollow f- feed is the uh, Marissa Queen, and uh, she communicates to you and says, uh, Captain, I do not mean to intrude, but the orb of transitions, the or- what do we call it? The transitions or translocations? I think it was transitions. Um, I think uh, it's transition. Yeah. So the orb of transitions just activated. Uh, has anything happened up there? As a matter of fact, yes. Um, I'm not sure if you're scans picked it up but a ship just appeared in system and uh, well we're still waiting to hear back but it looks like a federation ship that's odd uh i am seeing it now uh the atlantis is as you know a few light years out that's why we didn't notice it immediately but yes uh i believe that might provide an explanation for why your ship is here hmm Curious to know what's happened. I wasn't aware of any Dauntless classes operating this far out. And it is at that time that you are also now being hailed by Panek. Mithrin here. Commodore, I have uh, on board two officers of the USS Adiona. The Adiona? Indeed. Oh, that clears something up, at least. Uh, uh, only to, w- what's the status of their ship? Cranston and Locke have managed to prevent their warp core from reaching, and that we are currently towing it towards the Starbase Alexandria for repairs. And the crew? Unfortunately, all that seems to be remaining of the Adion crew are two officers, Captain Morgan and Lieutenant Commander Havoc. <sighs> Well, they're missing for eight months. I guess a lot must have happened. Um, debrief, debrief them, and we'll uh, exchange notes once we, the Amalthea comes within range. Very well, Commodore. Off you now. All right, and just as a point of order, so eight months ago they were officially declared lost, but before that there was a period of three years where they were oh, not they in communicado. Um, so technically, just, just because that was you can't really communicate to the Andromeda galaxy. Correct. Yeah. So it's one of those things where they have not been heard from for about three, uh, three and a half years, almost four years now. Um, so they, you know, it's it's been a while. Um, but in the interests of time, because uh, ironically, we only have so much of it, um, I'm just going to kick us to a senior staff meeting. And I'm curious uh, who would be present in this meeting. I mean, obviously, uh, Havoc and Morgan are going to be there. Uh, Mirthrin, you're going to be there. Uh, which of the captains or which of the other characters would you like to be there? Nick will be there. Uh, be there. Nick, okay. of course. Um, Nick. Oh. Beckett. Beckett. All right. Beckett would make right. sense. Um, Let's have Sim there, rather, because I imagine... Especially since Beckett, oh, you know, they passed off the whole Andromeda torch to Adiana on their way back. All 
Mm. Where mm. is Sim? I know she's here somewhere. Last on the bridge. <laughs> and I can't think of anyone else who'd be especially important to be there. Uh, well, I mean, as keeping Prier involved, uh, you could bring Captain Tuzon in on this as well. I was going to say Tuzon or Tuzon. Prier, either one could be there. Yeah, let's go with Tuzon. Tuzon is here. Yeah, just right. in case right. we have to like go to stuff that's Captain's ears only. Okay. Uh, would you include Commander Cam and or Vinleth in this discussion as well? Uh, yeah. Okay. So this is going to be a very crowded table and all. I'll put you guys here as I have almost finished up with the tokens. But yeah, uh, you guys all assemble uh, in the conference room of the Amalthea and you may commence your own debriefing. So, uh... I suppose I'm going to talk first. And uh, the only question I have to the rest of you is what happened to my ship? Where's my crew? Well, we do have... We may have half of an answer for you. Um, I was... We recently got a call from the Queen of the Marissa. That's the uh, species... The native species of the planet the station's based around. Uh, they are in possession of a Bajoran Orb of the Prophets, and it apparently activated just as your ship was arriving in system. Well, that's a partial answer, but I don't understand how a Gamma Quadrant species could get a hold of a Bajoran relic, and at the same time, I don't understand how the Adonia could have landed in this system if we're in another galaxy. Uh, gets a little, it gets a little more interesting than that. In, in fact, uh, Morgan, you're human, right? More or less, yes. Last time so I checked, you're familiar with, for instance, uh, the lost city of Atlantis. Yes, I am indeed. That ancient Earth legend that that's, we're still attempting to chase. Mm. Uh, we found it. It's uh, on the planet about sixty kilometers that way. He sort of points down at the floor. I'm sorry. The lost city, Earth city of Atlanta, yeah, is on the not, planet well, of the It's Earth not really city, lost. Yes, really lost. human city, no. Turns out uh, Earth had a second sentient species of aquatic humanoids living under the ocean. And at some point about 1,500 years ago, the orb of transition brought them to this part of the galaxy, along with their entire city. Third sentient species, I believe, Commodore. Yes, thank you, Third. I'm aware of Admiral Janeway. Old mission logs talking about there being a prehistoric species that was capable of warp travel and left Earth. And you're going to tell me that we shared this planet <laughs> in prehistoric ages with not one, but a second sentient species? Mm -hmm. I believe that uh, statement te is te incorrect. Technically four, technically, four of you count the whales, I suppose. But, um, yes, yeah, so, uh, we believe that is what pulled your ship here to the specific system. Um, presumably, whatever it was that caused the warp core to destabilize triggered something in the orb. So you're telling us that this orb is... Okay, I'm... I'm rather confused. I'm okay. You never so you're telling me that would a Bajoran orb. Uh, yes, it is very definitely a Bajoran orb. Uh, same design and everything. Unfortunately, the Marissa are preventing us from doing any scientific experiments regarding the orb to verify its veracity. How come? Are they hostile, or have we not? Oh uh, no, it is just. It's a culturally significant artifact for them, and, well, they aren't a Federation species, so they have jurisdiction here. Uh, I understand. They regard their orb just, orb just like the Bajorans regard theirs. They are we otherwise very welcoming and hospitable, and have let us have shore leave, and we have allowed us to park our space station above their planet. Out of character... Sorry to interrupt you, Jester. Um... The Romulans, when they were destabilizing the wormhole, were they ejecting protomatter into it? Hold on, there we go. Uh, no, they were ejecting, uh, I believe it was Silithium. That's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It was I just the... wanted to see if 
There was a connection there. Was there was a thing that specifically destabilizes wormhole. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Oh, so, I under okay. so I understand. So I understand that they have a orb that is supposedly activating when we appear, and somehow is most likely the cause of our appearance. But why only me and Morgan? Oh, that's the part we're not sure about. I mean, there there are no bodies on the ship, so presumably Captain. your crew is somewhere. Captain, if I may. Yes. I'm detecting a residual chroniton radiation emanating from both Commander Morgan and C Lieutenant Commander Havoc. Uh, have you have either of you been in contact with a temporal event recently, or ever? Twice. Twice. Was any of your other crew members uh, affected by the similar temporal radiation? Well, I uh, look at Havoc and I give her a glare for just answering it so casually. And I then respond and I just say, on more than one occasion, we may have had multiple instances where that temporal prime directive may have occurred. And the I crew see. may have been offended, may have been affected on more than one occasion. Uh, Captain, with your permission, I'd like to take the Radiance and the Dragon Squad over to the um, to the Ediona just to perform a more thorough scan. Mm. Agreed. Any a, any information we can get that can help us figure out what's going on here will be useful. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. And I'm. As I stride out the door, I'll uh, send a rally cry to the rest of Dragon Squad. Okay. So Vinleth uh, steps out to go do a little bit of investigating on the Dragon Squad side of things, but <laughs> carry on with your conversation. Uh, do you have any I idea if you've uh, attracted the um, ire of any more powerful species? I mean, you've been missing for close to four years at this point. Well, well, Captain, not missing, but out of contact. Well, Captain, let me tell you, the Andromeda Galaxy is no picnic. And being one lone ship out there, even with our, our task, it's 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 it, it's it was, it's a struggle. Good days and bad days, and a lot of and the last thing I remember was a bad day. We were attacked by a advanced species called Species 4, not our designation for them. It was one given to us, given to them rather, by a species called the Muad. I assume at this point, since we are out of place, that you are familiar with our mission to Andromeda. Uh, out of character, I'd assume so? Yeah. We are. They, they were leaving really? when Lysithia got back. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh... Beckett here was actually on the uh, original expedition to the Andromeda Galaxy. Ah, yes. I remember uh, that nice craft of beer he brought. In any case, we were... The last thing I remember her call this, we were being attacked by a species. And it just all became, becomes a blur from there. Hmm. Well, well, to fill in Morgan's blur, we did take a breach, of course, I believe you know that. Uh, Warp Corps decided to have a bit of a problem that day. And hmm, I think I... that may have that may have had a effect. Yeah, yes. The chromaton, re the chromaton contamination is confusing me, though. That's not really a feature of Warp Corps. Are there any... Um undocumented features on the Adiona that would require high-level clearance to hear about? Well, I uh, believe the ship... Well, that's a tech question. I'll take... I'll let Africa. I'll look at Morgan, give him the... Are you sure you want me to tell them everything? And well, I'll, not give, up. I'll give the half nod and just like, well, not everything, but, you know, give them enough. Well... We did have a system that allowed us to move quite a bit faster than normal, though it required ex extremely extensive calibrations to it, and generally was effectively dangerous if it ran too long. Uh, and, did it, and did it per chance uh, have to use a lot of Benamite? 
I give a look at Morgan. <clears throat> at that point, then, yeah, I will say you have my authorization to answer. And out of character, that was the thing it ran on, right? Yep, QSD runs on Betamite, or at least I, safely, anyway. I nod. Alright, well, right. well, well in, that, in that case, I can take it that weight off your shoulders. Uh, quantum slipstream drives have been declassified and are now being phased into regular service. Uh, two ships in the fleet actually have them. Captain Merthrin, Commander Cam speaks up. Yes. As attaché for Admiral Skull, I was made aware of several classified reports. One indicates a particular report classified under the Temporal Prime Directive that indicate in which not only mentions two of the individuals at this table from the Adiona, the two of the captains here also partook in it. Perhaps there's a similarity. Mm. Um, if such a temporal incident occurred, uh, we have been instructed to not engage in conversation about it. Agreed. That's why I wish not to actually talk about the report, but rather mention that there is a connection. However, it would explain the chroniton radiance appearing on the two officers here, and why, if they were translocated, only they appeared displaced in time rather than their entire crew. So does that mean the rest of their crew is still floating around Andromeda, shipless? Even I have more tact than you, Captain. So, uh, <laughs> not to interrupt, uh, and not to speak for Vinleth, but Vinleth does call in and says, uh, Captain Merthrin, sorry to interrupt, but I think this is very important for you to hear. Sort of, Merthrin sort of get, gets up to listen. Uh, yep, continue. Uh, well, sir, uh, are you familiar with the incident uh, surrounding Janeway and a temporal explosive device? Uh, out of character, was that the one in the finale? Uh, that would be the episode Relativity, and technically it is still sealed to Captain's eyes only. The only reason Vinleth knows about it is because she's done a little bit of digging. And yeah, that's the one yeah, where Braxton one. went back in time to kill, you know, plant the bomb on Voyager, then another Braxton got seven of nine to go back, and it was kind of weird. Ah, that one. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was thinking the one where someone thought, you know what's great? A gun that wipes you out of history. I mean, that's essentially what a uh, temporal bomb does. So... Hmm. Uh, hmm. Curious. I'll take it in my ready room. Uh, you, The rest of you are free to... Uh, continue the briefing uh, while I take this. All right. So it's it's well we'll not fully change scenes here, but Mirthrin, uh, you just kind of go across the hallway into your ready room to see this, and I'd like you to roll me an insight engineering, please, at a difficulty of two. All righty. Also, I will apologize if any of that thunder is leaking through the microphone. Apparently, this is our first thunderstorm of spring. Nope, not hearing a thing over here. Uh, I got we got the first frost of autumn this morning. Yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we had the storm yesterday. I I rather much like the rain, so it, it's sunny. been it's sunny and sunny and here. So it was difficulty two, you said, right? Yep, difficulty two. And my focuses are all things like particle physics and uh, Xeno technology, so... I will give you particle physics. Okay. I'll find the particles. <laughs> oh, and spending a momentum for the extra die. Okay. Uh, in that case, you are now at a grand total of three, three momentum. momentum. Mirthrin, you realize something very somber and very, shall we say, important. Um, the temporal explosive device, uh, it, it went off. Uh, and by all rights, it should have wiped not only the Adiona crew down to the last man out, but the ship with it. However, because Havoc and Morgan experienced a quote-unquote temporal shift that was just brought up by Cam. They were protected from this sort of temporal displacement device. 
How the Adiona survived, you have no clue. But that's what you realize. Hmm. And, uh... Hmm. And of course, my out of character, my first thought is figuring out if there's any connection between proto-matter and time bombs. Uh, that would uh, probably oh. take a little bit of time for you to, uh, to figure out, but, uh, you know, for briefing purposes, that's probably good enough to start getting people thinking. Yeah, the, the, that'd be that'd be the thing for the science team to try and figure out. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, Mer- so Mirthra and all sort of once he's read that, he'll sort of like take it in and then come back into the briefing room. Presumably, has the br- briefing just continued? Or uh, I, I would say you maybe have stepped away for maybe two, three minutes. So people just waited for you. Yeah, yeah. and sort of he comes back in with a sort of very somber-looking expression on his face and just sort of sits down without saying anything. That quickly sweeps the Kalto set off the table so he doesn't see it. <laughs> Tuzan goes, dang it, I was winning! <laughs> Captain, well, uh... Captain? Yes, um... Uh... Well, I suppose the f- first priority will be making sure the walk core on the Adiana is stable and get some proper repairs done. Uh, in the meantime, we'll organize a uh, notice to be sent back to the Alpha Quadrant on the next communication window in the Midas Array to let them know that the Adiana has returned to the Milky Way. Should we be focused on walking them here, or should we try to return them reverse what happened? We still have a mission to continue. Maybe it hasn't happened yet for you, or rather, maybe it hasn't been completed for us. But we we still need to we still need to finish our mission over there in Andromeda. There's a problem. You are currently missing the majority of and, your crew. And uh, for, and to that and to that uh, end, I'm going to get the science get a science team organized to figure out exactly what happened to your ship and see if we can't reverse it. Uh, well, I have an idea of where we can start. Uh, in the meantime, I believe that's as much as we can cover in this meeting. Uh, all of you are dismissed, uh, with the exception of uh, uh, Mor- Morgan and Havoc. Uh, if you could stay for a bit. For a bit. Um, when Becky gets up to leave, he'll uh, look to Morgan and uh, Commander. If uh, if you're up to it. When you're done talking to Captain Merthrin, uh, come on over to Lysithia. There's some things that I'll uh, clue you in on. Well, I appreciate that, Beckett. Is your uh, brewery still on board? Uh, it is. Well, maybe after all this time, I could finally find a palatable. Oh uh, well, we'll we'll find you one, but uh. Finish talking with the captain first, and then head on over to Lysithia. Sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm back. I had to step away from the mic real quick. Eh, no worries. Uh, no worries. Uh, everybody but Havoc, Morgan, and uh, Mirthrin have stepped out of the briefing room at this point. Uh, Mirthrin sort of, uh, once everyone's at, he sort of uh, leans forward a bit, and like you can see sort of the sort of calm, neutral expression he's been keeping sort of drops a little. So... Our first priority will be figuring out what happened and then seeing if there's any way to reverse what happened. And uh, truly, I hope that is undoing whatever was done here is actually an option because well, I can't go into the exact details, but uh, based on the based on the combination of the chroniton emissions and the proto and the proto matter shock wave that preceded your arrival. I have reason to believe that your ship was targeted by a temporal bomb. A temporal bomb. And I say to say, Captain, at the same time, I understand I'm probably sounding like a broken record at this point. And I don't mean to be so direct, but if there's information that you're keeping from me on account of the temporal prime directive, 
commanding officer to commanding officer, I could tell you that it's definitely not our own our first experience with such an with such an such, with such an such event, event as you know. You know. So in that case, I would really appreciate it if you would give me all the detail. Hmm. Master will think about it for a bit. The details are a little sketchy, seeing as the device comes from some point in the future. But essentially, it erases the target from the time stream entirely. By rights, oh. the by rights, the Adiona should no longer exist, and in fact, should never have existed. Uh, I can only surmise that you two survived due to your previous experience with temporal phenomena. As for why the Adiona itself survived, I haven't a clue. Well, that actually kind of puts a damper on things, <laughs> but nothing that. It's going to stop me from uh, doing what needs to be done. We're here, yeah. and if there's something that could be done, let's just point us in the right direction. Mm. Havoc is a skilled engineer. I have experience in temporal mechanic. I would And we are on a ship with a crew of 1,500, so we're bound to have some scientists with the specialization in temporal mechanics. But who? But getting down to brass tacks. I can't think of anybody that would want to completely ha remove our ship from the timeline, much less necessarily have the technology in Andromeda to do so. The uh, most advanced race that we met in the galaxy had ships made out of pure neutronium. But other than that, there's no one that, at least, you know, from my perspective, that would have the ability to do such a thing. Yeah, Mithrilga, which raises the rather disturbing possibility that uh, this is a personal enemy of some kind. Well, I mean, I probably haven't necessarily made the... I probably necessarily haven't made the best friends of other entities, and I will say that my initial first contact wasn't necessarily the best, but all those kinks ironed themselves out in time. And at least from where I was coming from, the future was hopeful. Hmm. Well, I'm sending you some names to talk to, and uh, Havoc, I'm sending you some specs for potential modifications to your cybernetics that you may want to try that may... Uh, Make give you an easier time dealing with chronotons. And basically he's just going to sort of context-free send sort of the specs of like when they sort of modified Seven of Nine's ocular implants to sort of detect time-displaced things. Have I lost sound? Nope. Mm. Nope. Geo uh, run that by me again because I want to say I, I want to make sure I say the right thing. Yeah, uh, ba basically he's uh sort of sending the sort of specs of like the time times they've uh, modified Seven of Nine's Borg ocular implants to be better at detecting chronotons, so that she can potentially use that as a basis for temporarily modifying her own. Okay, yeah, I was I was confused there for a second because uh, I was thinking of something else entirely. Uh, related to Seven of Nine. Um, it was, I think, also relativity is what I was thinking of. Um, but yeah. Because I know but, there was yeah. like a device they gave them that was from the future, so it won't be that. But Right, I think that's what I was thinking of. Um, yeah, you can certainly provide that data, no problem. Um, um, but basically, the stuff from the relativity report that would have been classified, but just context free. Right, 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 right. But yeah, uh, I think actually this is a perfect opportunity for a five to ten minute break. Uh, so if everybody could be back uh, no later than the top of the hour. And yeah, see you everyone. in ten.
So right, Walker is apparently breaking out a black light and walking around the ship. Yes, for, as, uh, as we do black light inspections of the ship. Uh, welcome back, everyone, from break. Um, before uh, we sort of adjourn from the meeting, there was one thing that I think Havoc might want to bring up before uh, we let the science nerds do their thing. And Soup, uh, it should be a Discord PM, and I'll let you flavor how you want to bring that up. Sorry, the ping just pinged me now. Oh, boy. Oh, he really is operating in the past. <laughs> yes, yes, I am operating in the past. Why, thank you. Oh, uh, all right. So, Morgan and Captain Merthrin. Cons... Considering our situation, I've looked at the Gammon Vanguard situation and how we're stranded out here. I think I might be able to repurpose the Muat Nullgate technology, you remember that, Morgan, by drawing upon the Suthan Sun to send ships all the way out to the Alpha Quadrant. Sorry, I had to work it suddenly in the moment. And yeah, that's also good. Hmm. So you mean all that work that we that we made that we took on the slingshot to actually get us further past the veil? You want to repurpose that sort of technology? Basically, yes. I think it worked, but uh, in our ship's current well, let's just leave it. I put some. I put quite a bit of stress on a ship to fire it out again. Well, I mean. That shouldn't be any problem here. We got an entire fleet to play with this time. I would ask, though, um, what effect would this have on the sun? I don't believe we'd have too much of an effect on the sun itself. We just need to draw some of the power it's already releasing. So mm. we're basically so repurposing what's already there to our advantage. No. Run, run, run the schematics past my desk when you have time, but uh, if if the risk of uh, affecting the Marissa's home system sun is too high, we'll need to use a different system. Morgan, when we used it last time, did it have an effect on any of the surrounding area that you remember? Well, not to my knowledge, no. Um, after we re-compared notes, um, cause from my now out of character question, during, I know this is a long time back, so maybe the GM might not even remember, but we separated, after we did that whole thing with the slingshot, there were two separate ships, right? We went on the Rama Mimin first, and then I believe the Adonia followed us? Yes, that is correct. I am remembering that correctly. So, back in character... We had two separate ships. We had two separate ships for that event, but it didn't necessarily seem like the Adonia was any danger. One of the ships that we did go in was, was did have a neutronium hull, but it didn't suffer any complications. Hmm. As, as you'd expect with a neutronium hull. Still want the schematics for that thing and want to know how they actually managed to get neutronium to work that way. So, so uh, Havoc, I will tell you out of character that uh, the schematics, everything you worked on in regards to Neutronium survived in the Adionis computer banks. I, in character, don't think I would know that because I didn't check the computer banks yet. Oh, fair. Uh, I'm sorry, continue. No, no, you go. I was. No, I was, I was gonna, gonna have a thought. I was gonna say I, st I stepped away for ten seconds, so I missed that. We're we're just talking about the fact that uh, everything I worked on in the Muat ship is still inside the Adiona's databanks, but my character, who hasn't had a chance to check to make sure all the information is still downloaded in there, doesn't know. I see. Okay. And, uh, not to cut the conversation short, but uh, once again, uh, the Amalthea ship shudders 
And it goes to red alert again. Oh, no. Free pack to Captain. No, it's from here. Go ahead. What are you guys doing now? I will let you know in two seconds. Mirthra into bridge. What's going on? Uh, so, Gortag, you're on duty. Uh, it seems that uh, the remnants of the Benala, or the Benetta, I never remember what we named the stupid, the Romulan ship at this point. Uh, the Benala. Uh, the Romulan ship is quite literally firing at you with some torpedoes that they somehow kept hidden this entire time. Wait, wait uh, what? what? Where did that shield... Shields up, move to disable the uh, that husk. Captain, permission to just destroy it? <sighs> Target the weapon arrays. So I will say two things here. I'm going to spend some threat and say that uh, the torpedoes streak past harmlessly by the Amalthea. But uh, Rizazo, if you could give me an insight security, please. Uh, difficulty two. One second. I'm gonna buy one extra dice with okay. that momentum we have, which should probably be down one less because it seems like a scene change. Yep. So you guys would have no momentum after this. Yep. We have one momentum after this. Yep. We have one momentum. Very success. Very nice. So you realize, uh, very importantly, that the torpedoes are not headed for the Amalthea. They are headed for the Adiona. Captain, they're targeting the Dauntless class. Uh, <clears throat> is Cranston and Locke still on it? Probably. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the Radiance is nearby. Can the Radiance intercept? Yes. Would the Adionia be Move. in the Alexandria? Let's, let's, have, let's have a calm discussion about who's going to intercept the tor torpedoes. Yeah, I was going to say. Can I just move the ship? <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, basically, I think Mercer was just going to say prime phases intercept. Okay, so uh, I know a lot of people are trying to jump on this, but let's, let's try and uh, break it down. So I will say. <laughs> One ship slash one crew can attempt one action to uh, get rid of these torpedoes. And there's several <clears throat> ways you could do it. You could try and shoot them down. You could literally use your own shields uh, to take the blow. Uh, you could, uh, those of you on the Adiona, you could attempt to get the ship moving in evasive maneuvers. Uh, but at the end of the day across the entire fleet, you guys only get one action. So make a count. Uh, I'm tempted to go just use the phases, try and shoot them down. What if what if the Ophion micro-warp jumped right in front of them? I was going to say the same thing with the Mei Yuan. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing same with thing the with Adiona, the being I'm currently sitting on it. And all three ships meet in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> In an attempt to save one ship, they kill each other. This is how the game ends, apparently. Well, I won't let it happen like that. I'm going to throw my hat into the ring. Um. <laughs> but, well, basically, would anyone be able to do anything faster than Mirthra and could, say, prime phases shoot down the torpedoes? Uh, I would say that it is possible because everyone in the fleet would get the same red alert when torpedoes are fired. Um... But yeah, this this sort of one action is because the torpedoes are in flight already. Uh, do, do, do I need to exercise Commodore's privilege to resolve this? <laughs> I, I think you're going to have to. Go ahead, Walter. Right, no, the, 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 <laughs> I'm just laughing because I'm on the ship. Can I, can I just move the Adiona out of the way? You can, but remember, it or does have a shields. number of breaches and no shields, so... Yeah. Well, Adiona's basically a lame duck. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Amalthea will be targeting the torpedoes with phases. Okay, so, Rizazo, this falls to you. Uh, this <laughs> is going to be a control security base difficulty of three, because you're targeting torpedoes in flight, 
However, I'm going to spend some threat to make that a difficulty 5. And I'm going to make the complication range in 18 to 20. Yo, if you let these Romulans break my ship, I swear. <laughs> um, I'm going to start off by spending my determination of protect the squad as a, as a value. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Because I am protecting my damn squad <laughs> by shooting those torpedoes. So that's uh, one one dice automatically. And yeah, we only have the one momentum, so I can't get third die. So well, I'll just see where the the dice lie. Well, you uh, weapon, sc- weapon security uh, for the ship. Uh yes. yes, it would be weapon security for the ship. Actually, I'm gonna spend our one momentum and give you one additional threat for an additional die. Okay. Alrighty. There's five successes. Let's see if the ship the ship does not get anything for you. Nope. All right. So uh, Rosazzo, uh, you uh, with your quick horda reflexes, uh, you are able to shoot down the two photon torpedoes that were sent hurtling towards the Adiona just in time. It was a big, pretty explosion. Mm-hmm. And by now, Mirthrin, I imagine you have literally run onto the bridge. Oh, yeah. But are getting sh- Shields up, maneuver the Amalthia to shield the Adiona. Yes, sir. Uh, the Ophion will move in to disable the Romulan's weapon uh, systems. Okay. Uh, actually, at this point, I would like not Rizazo or Hamasi, Gorteg. I'd like you to roll me an insight security, please. Difficulty one. Okay. Uh, uh, do I have an applicable focus? I say you do. Okay. So, Gorteg, uh, as you're looking at this entire situation, you realize the distinctive signature of a Klingon bird of, play, bird of prey decloaking. And before anyone else can do anything, Captain Jamun and his vessel opens fire on the Romulan husk. And the husk has no shields. The husk literally has all of one thing left. And it explodes with oh. everything on board. Darn Klingons taking ethical quandaries out of our hands again. Mm-hmm. Why did they commit suicide by Klingon? And uh, after a moment, uh, Gorteg, you are seeing that you're getting a hail from Captain Jamon. Uh, I will growl and on screen. And uh, appearing on the hollow screen is a very jovial looking Jamon. And he says, ah, I'm glad we were here. We stopped those Romulans from once again showing what cowardly dogs they are. And you prove how much of an idiot you are, you blind Targ. And he just kind of looks at you questioningly. You are a member of this fleet, and therefore under the command of Captain Mirthman. I think what Gorteg is trying to say is that it would have been really useful to know why they waited until now to use a hidden torpedo and why target the Adiona. No, Captain, I meant what I said. He's an idiot. And yeah, Mercer was sort of like making just cool it gestures to Gorte. <laughs> well, be, uh... be that as it may, uh, while uh, technically speaking, I can't. S- I can't officially be grateful for the help, but I'm perfectly happy to write this down in the log as suicide by Klingon on the on the Talshiar's part. Indeed, and to be frank, I think we gave them a warrior's death. It is better end than wasting away on some planet where they will never see their true homes again. Um, mm-hmm. can. While he's saying that, can uh, Gortek run a scan of the Dederdex to see if they had any other uh, torpedoes, or if those two were the only ones? Uh, yeah, you can run me, let's say, a Reason Security, and the uh, the Amalthia will assist you with a sense. Out of character, I keep forgetting we have a bird of prey with us. 
That's because they're very sneaky. They're they're very good Klingon intelligence officers. You keep forgetting about them. All right, uh, one success. I need to see uh, another success on the ship. So sensor security for the ship. Whoever's got the Amalthea. I can do that. Uh, sensor security. Nice. Yeah, uh, Gorteg. Uh, now that you uh, you know you actually take a moment to calm down a little bit and scan, you see that there are telltale signs that they had not two, not three, but a grand total of ten torpedoes somehow hidden away, and that they were all sort of ready to fire. Uh, that's probably why the bird or the uh, the warbird exploded was because not because of Jamon's hit but because one of the torpedoes went up. So in a way, Jamun didn't actually kill them. The Romulans kind of killed themselves, if that makes any sense. Makes any sense. Suicide by Klingon. Gortek will just look at his console and seethe. <clears throat> I'll, uh... Uh, I guess that raises the stakes a little. What's so special about the Adiona? Was it just a target of opportunity, or did they recognize it? Captain, uh, if I may. Yes? It's my understanding that the Tholians um, are chroniton-based, correct? Uh, not chroniton-based, but they really don't like time travel. We the uh, we do have one in our brig. Perhaps they are somehow offended by its presence. Hmm. Worth we'll a try. I'll go down and talk to our little spider friend. See if he feels like being talked. I'm gonna interject for a moment. Uh, where are where are Morgan and Havoc during this? Up Probably to you. Where would you like to be? I was going to assume the bridge, you know, considering I need a yep, front row seat to what was going on. Okay, yeah, so in that on case, the bridge. All right, then. Well, in that case, okay. I'm going to turn uh, unless, unless, Commander, you know of any reason why the Tal Shiar would have a grudge against the Adiona? I'd have no knowledge of why the Tal Shiar would dislike the Adiona, but I do recall before we left the Alpha Quadrant, we were briefed on, I think it was possible, Tholian involvement. I Out of character, wasn't that our first engagement, GM? Um, The first engagement was with the Zenkethi. Oh, the Zenkethi. Yeah, it was with the Zenkethi. I am completely misremembering our space and ignore everything I just said. <laughs> It's Captain. <laughs> well, ignore everything I just said, Captain. <laughs> no, uh, no, uh, uh, I waited for you to finish. Gorteg is now kind of turned to Mirthrin, mm -hmm. Captain. Yeah. Commander? Didn't that Tholian say that the mission that this Dederdex had was to strand us out here and make it to where we couldn't get back? That is true. And the Aediona showing up out of nowhere in a manner that they don't understand, that we don't understand, means that we could possibly have a way of getting back. And more to the point... The Tal Shiar don't give up. That was their mission, was oh. to make sure we don't get back. Yes. And uh, out of character, like that, that, that raises the possibility that we have a spy in our rank, because uh, Havoc did say, hey, we have a way of possibly definitely getting you back, and I don't know who's been told that. As far as I know, it was just you, Morgan, and Mirth or So Mirthra and Havoc and, and Morgan Havoc were the and... only ones privy to that information. That information. Mm -hmm. I, I look at Mirthra and say, are we sure that they don't have someone looking through our camera systems and listening in? Uh, not any more, I wouldn't imagine. Unless, and on that note, Mirthrin will sort of head towards the brig. Okay. 
Uh, are you going by yourself, or are you bringing anyone with you? I'm uh, just like a, a security detachment, and I'll probably invite Havoc and Morgan to come along. Okay. So uh, let me uh, just very briefly, because got to find where I put it. There he is, Newbrig. Because I'd imagine we've by now had time to like repurpose a cell to be a more comfortable Folian environment. Right. Uh, all right. So you can walk in. Havoc, you're behind him. Uh, Morgan, are you there as well? I'm going to go with uh, silence means a no. Oh, forgive me. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Then you are there. All right. And yeah, uh, inside the cell, you do see uh, one Commander Nostrine. Uh You see that the cell has been reinforced uh, six ways to Sunday. And that there are two posted guards uh, with phaser rifles standing by on either side of the force field. Like, you know, to the left and to the right of the force field. Uh, so the first Mirthrin's just going to sort of stand stand there and not say anything to see if Nustreen volunteers any information. Uh, so when you walk in, uh, Nustreen kind of looks towards Morgan and Havoc and almost hisses. It's uh, it's sort of a crystalline hiss, almost like rocks rubbing together. And it says, and it's, uh... why have you brought those things here? Oh, I see you've met before. No, we have never met, but I can smell their taint. Phrasing, by the way. <laughs> I, I, believe I, I believe I clean myself every single day. Actually, you need to fix my sonic shower, but that's not what this is about. I thought I... Oh, I see the answer didn't do it. Okay. Well, that answers one of my questions, at least. No, oh, what? What is? I gesture towards the uh, being in salt. What's his name? Oh, uh, this name is Commander Nostreen. Uh, this is Com uh, Havoc Morgan. Meet Commander Nostreen, formerly of the Tholian, Wa Tholian capital ship. Uh, what was it called again? Adelicite. Adelicite. Of the Tholian capital ship Adelicite. I take it you've already commenced a debriefing previously. Ah, uh, yes, uh, yeah, Nostreen here is uh, indirectly responsible for helping us uh, perfect the first QSD drive on the Ophion. Now, I have a question. Nostreen, what do you mean by taint? You do not belong in this time. Yes, I understand that, but that was not caused by us. We had a breach in our core and suddenly appeared here. I'm not sure he cares either way. Yeah, he doesn't really respond, but the helmet does continue to look at you. Can so, I make a... Uh, uh, can I make a... I suppose oh, that... Go oh, oh. Yep. What do you go? Let's, uh, let's go to... Uh, let's go to Morgan first. So what do, what do you have, Morgan? I wanted to make a roll. Uh, command roll to see if I could read this guy. See if I could pick up on anything that not not that the uh, the crew is incompetent, but see if I could read anything off this uh, guy in the specific situation. Okay. Uh, why don't you uh, roll me you... a insight command uh, difficulty four? You'll probably have an easier time than me because uh, uh, last I checked, I'm pretty sure Tholians aren't really don't really get picked up by empathy. Yeah, oh, Tholians are a not empathic ability, or you know what I'm trying to say. Uh, but basically, Mirthrin doesn't have any special advantages here. Mm -hmm. Well, I guarantee you, I can't talk you into using diplomacy or temper. <laughs> so I'm just going to go with no focus, and let's see what happens. All right. Close. Uh, I will say this can succeed at cost, but I will take threat for it. I'll take it. All right. So, uh, what you're realizing, uh, Morgan, uh, strangely, you do recall something important about Nostreen. Uh, you know, it was kind of one of those throwaway reports that you were reading um, 
based, you know, before you shipped out on the Adiona, but there was some sort of discussion that perhaps Nostreen was working with someone outside the Typhon Pact uh, with an unknown agent, but that's the extent of what you remember. So then, uh, I suppose the last question before we leave you to your own devices again would be were the torpedoes for a specific target or merely waiting for a target of opportunity? We were cleansing the wound in time. Hmm. Thank you, Commander Nostrian. That's been quite informative. And uh, Matherin will sort of turn to leave. And as you start to leave, Nostrian calls, You know nothing of what lies in the future. It is inevitable. I look back at Nostrian. Uh, yeah, and uh, Mithril will sort of call back, uh, Temporal Prime Directive would suggest otherwise. I look back at Nostrian and say, Why are you trying to cleanse the wound instead of closing the wound? That has been our instruction. Yet, if you had helped us, if you help us figure out exactly what's going on and why we are displaced, we would be able to get back to our time and you would have no problem. Except the Adiona cannot be allowed to exist further in any form. Well, that's a problem that uh, you're never going to be able to solve. And it is at this point that I'm going to roll a challenge die. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Yeah, you're fine. So Nostreen, uh puts a hand up to the force field, and of course the force field, you know, keeps them inside. But uh, Nostreen does make a point of showing that uh, they are not thrilled with anything going on right now. I'll send your past self a letter when we get uh, back to our time stream. Possibly. Probably not. And again, there's that sort of rock grating crystalline hiss. And uh, as they head out, Merthyn will start explaining. It's uh, Nostreen there is uh, pretty much the reason the Gamma Vanguard is currently stranded out here instead of out by the other end of the Bajoran wormhole. See, so, uh, he and the, well, the rest of the crew of that uh, Dideridex floating that used to be floating out there. Uh, took it upon themselves to try seeding the wormhole with silithium as we were traversing in order to essentially destroy the wormhole with us in it. Uh, as for why they waited until we were there, uh, let's just say that both he and every single Tal Shiar on that ship had a personal grudge against me. Wow. What did you do? I didn't know you were so popular, Captain. Uh, well, Nostreen, we embarrassed by successfully escaping from Tholian space under his watch. The Tal Shiar... And uh, Merthrin gets visibly sort of embarrassed. I may have sort of kind of, back when I was an engineer on the Ophion, uh, blown up a shuttle on a Tal Shiar base with an unstable singularity core and killed about 4,000 Tal Shiar operatives. Side note, it was a thousand, but I'm gonna run with the four thousand now. Thank you for upping your own body count. <laughs> Inflation over time. <laughs> and uh Com Commander Jamund just uh blew up the last remaining uh aggrieved family members, shall we say. So this vanguard isn't here to protect the Federation, but to cover your own ass? The Gamma Vanguard is meant to be here to explore the, explore the Gamma Quadrant. We're still doing that, just not in the location we were originally intended to be in. <laughs> Believe me, you don't have to explain anything to me about sidetracking. In any case... <laughs> But, uh, yeah, let's just say I have a personal stake in making sure everyone in this fleet gets back home. And as you guys are walking and talking, uh, you're in the hallway when you see a certain collapsed figure uh, in the middle of a hallway junction. What? Oh, no, no bloody way. No bloody way. I immediately run up. All right. 
So you run up to the figure, and uh, they are encased in a bio suit, uh, one that both Havoc and Morgan are intimately familiar with. Do you know this creature? Please, I need to see if I can wake her up. All right. Uh, I... What would you uh, What would you be trying to do to wake her up? I attempt to pull her up to a sitting position first, of course. Okay. Uh, it's easy enough to uh, get them up, even with their uh, larger frame. And I shake them lightly. Lightly. Uh, this... Go ahead, Morgan. I was going okay, to say, at this point, I'd probably tap my comm badge and just say, you know, emergency medical team to our location. All right. So, Havoc, uh, you do your best to uh, work on her, uh, but before Preer arrives, uh, Mirthrin did ask a question. So, you know this person? Yes, I know this person. Her name's Andromeda. She was our VIP. I see. Meaning, we have two problems now. And we gotta get her awake. And Andromeda is, is the let's, reason. Let's, let's get her to the sick bay. Well, it is about now that Priya, you come running down this side of the hallway with a med kit in hand, and yeah, uh, for those who don't know what Andromeda looks like, uh, I'm going to see if I can't uh, pop a bit of art of her up on the screen. Um, but basically imagine uh, a creature, uh, humanoid in nature, uh, that is encased within a full bio suit. Uh, they have these sort of uh, red frills that come off of either side of their helmet slash head. Um, their suit in general is a darker blue, darker purple. And it's stylized throughout uh, that gives them almost a uh, a smooth and sleek feel to uh, their appearance. Uh, but they do not have uh, any like features that are visible. So like you can't read their eyes, you can't read their expression. Um, and for, again, the uninitiated, uh, Andromeda is a member of the species called the Dorney, which I play on the Kairos game. But that's digressing a little bit. Uh, but uh, Prier... You come running up, you see this creature. I come running up, unlock my med kit, get down to her. What happened? And I look up, who are you? You don't need to know who I am, just understand that this is a VIP. She, we found her collapsed here, and I believe we should just get her to sickbay for a scan. Well, let's see if I can scan her here to make sure she's stable enough to transport. Does anybody know what happened here? No, we literally we just... just walked out into the corridor and found her lying here. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. She's like nothing I've seen before. Let's see if I can do this. Alright, that's going to be a reason medicine, please. A difficulty three, unless you have something related to quick study as a talent. I have quick study as a talent. Then it's only a difficulty two. Would we also be able to assist based on our knowledge of Andromeda's suit system? Yes, I will say Havoc can assist with a reason engineering. So I'm doing assistance reason shall be given. I'm doing reason medicine difficulty to xenobiology as a focus. Mm hmm. And we don't have any momentum, do we? Nope. Darn. Do I get a focus from xenotechnology or ancient technology? Eh, yeah, that's kind of in the realm of Andromeda. All right, I do have dedicated focus xenobiology, so when uh, each d20 that generates two successes also generates one bonus momentum. Very nice. That's Ooh. not the way I wanted to go. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, I'm going to keep that complication, and the complication is uh, you are able to tell between the two of you that... Uh, Really, all Andromeda needs is a fresh influx of power, but her vi her life signs are fading fast. If you don't do anything now, like something drastic right I'm... here in this moment, uh, she oh. may perish. I'm going to immediately use... Uh, I'm immediately going to attempt to interface with the suit in order to uh, share power supply. Now, I will say, if I recall correctly, you have tried that in the past, and it was unsuccessful. Um, however, uh, if you give me a point of threat, I will give you a possible idea. Are we going to shoot her with I, a phaser? Get, I give it to her. <laughs> I give it to you. you okay. 
I will simply say that, uh, you know, like any other corridor, there are EPS conduits behind every single wall. Well, I am, I believe I know exactly what we're going to do. I look at C Captain Merthyr and say, I apologize for the small amount of damage I will be doing to your ship. And immediately go to rip one of those out of the wall. Wait, what sort of damage have you... Oh, uh, right. All right. So, you know, with your Borg, freed Borg strength, you easily rip away part of the wall and expose a uh, an EPS conduit. Uh, what do you do with it? I'm going to... Well... Since her suit needs the power to, well, to continue working, I'm going to basically use my arm as the converter system to uh, get the power to her. Okay. In a, so it does so it doesn't fry the suit immediately, but, but it it's, uh, it'll get the power to her suit to start it up again. Going all Flynn from Tron. All right. So I will say. Uh, that this is going to be very taxing on your arm. Uh, in fact, oh, may, I, I expect it to break. Yeah, I would say there's a very high possibility of it breaking. But let me roll the challenge die and see what happens. Okay, so two things are going to happen. Uh, the good news is that you are able, uh, using your arm as a conduit, to feed power into Andromeda and Prier. You are seeing that the uh, life signs are returning to this creature, to Andromeda. However, uh, right about that same time, Havoc's arm literally explodes from the power. And EPS, uh, you know, the plasma begins leaking into the corridor, and Havoc goes down with a lethal injury. Prayer Hood is combat. Engineering! Emergency! And Metron will just go up and immediately start trying to just either isolate the EPS conduits or seal the plasma breach. Okay, let's Can do I you, Mirthrin, first. Uh, I need you to roll me a Daring Engineering uh, difficulty two, please. And uh, to queue up Prier, Prier, uh, you need to roll me a Daring Medicine difficulty one to stabilize Havoc. Oh, well, I will be using Jury Rig to reduce the difficulty by two down to a minimum of zero. Okay. Uh, okay. Repairs will only last for a single scene plus one per momentum spent before they fail again. Okay. And then the difficulty increases by one. But the main thing is just sealing it off so we're not getting plasma vented onto everyone. Okay. I am the stable, it seems. Yep. In fact, you guys got uh, two momentum from that. Nice. And, and another you, three. Uh, <laughs> you actually get three from Mirthrin, so you're up to five momentum. So yeah, uh, Prayer, you yeah. quickly uh, run over. Mirthrin sort remember. of basically sort of Fine, reaches up, finds an, like an emergency repair spanner kit hidden behind a wall, grabs it, goes over to the uh, plasma conduit and just basically does a rough and tumble, sort of just crimps the plasma vent closed and then sort of flips a circuit breaker on the EPS conduit that sort of like cuts out the lights for half the corridor but stops the sparking. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that'll hold it for a few minutes before the pressure get before the pressure build up in the plasma conduits gets too much. But uh, at least now we're not going to be breathing in plasma fumes. All right, I apologize for the damage I caused, but I didn't have much of an option. Well, whatever you did stabilized your life signs. Although now I need to do some emergency medicine on you. I'll survive. I'll survive. Hey, I rather. I rather you break their ship than I than ours. I I attempt to actually get to my feet after the injury. Uh, you're you can well. Why don't you roll me a challenge die? Let's do it that way. Roll me a challenge die. No, you uh, nope. you try to stand and you fall right back onto your ass. May I make a suggestion and we all beam to my medical bay so that we don't have to be here if this thing explodes. Agreed. Prayer to transport uh, actually, you, six. You, you transport your two patients. Morgan and I will meet you there at the from the turbo. Prayer to transport room six. Two to sick bay. Medical emergency. All right. So, uh, as I get your tokens set up, uh, yeah, you um, guys will. Oh, go ahead. 
as ever, just as they leave through the turbo lift, you see the other one open up, and Freepot comes in with a toolkit. And just no as one the plasma the conduit explodes. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Love jury rig. Yeah. Jury rig's great like that. I feel bad for him, but uh, hey, you know, if you can't pick on so, a frame. So I, I guess now the that entire wall is just destroyed. Yeah. 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 Uh, all of you arrive uh, in sick bay. I start tending to Havoc's arm, um, most likely having to pretty much amputate all of the Borg. Uh, cybernetics. Yeah, like, this arm from almost, like, half forearm down is just gone. There's a release over by at my shoulder. You can just take it off. I do so. Well, lucky for you, we do have a prosthetics uh, specialist over on the Ophion that would love to make you a new arm. Don't tell the doctor that. What I look at Morgan. Our doctor. Oh. I turn around to Andromeda and looking at her scans. Well, she's still unconscious, but her st signs are stabilizing. Well, when she wakes up, so, I'm gonna make this sure... This is why there was so much secrecy surrounding the Adiona's mission. And if you tell anyone, there will be... Probably problems in your timeline. Hmm. Wait, did you just say, uh, time travel makes my head hurt? Don't worry about it. It's better not to think about it. Or you'll get used to it. And I look back at Havoc and I just shake my head a little bit. I don't think I, I like I that. give you the stink eye, Morgan. Period just turned. I don't like either of those options, actually. So, I try to push myself up on the bed so I'm at least in a sitting position. Mm -hmm. How extensive is the damage to my internal organs? Well, that, that was a pretty nasty jolt of power that you used yourself as a conduit um, it's going to take a little bit of time to heal, to say the least. It's a probably a good thing that your uh, Borg implants are still there, because they can conduct a lot of power. Well, everything I'm looking at right now is uh, colors are off in the Borg eye, so I think I may have done a little damage to that. Well, let me, let well, me have, oops, sorry. Well, Havoc's nanoprobes actually. Well, I'm, this is me asking, Prier, will Havoc's nanoprobes at least assist in partial regeneration? Uh, GM, will they? Yeah. Just gotta sort of, quote-unquote, feed them energy, which, you know, as long as they get a good meal, uh, you know. Well, luckily, the nanoprobes should do a lot of healing on their own, although I am, we're gonna have to supply a little bit of energy there. Well, at, at the very least, it's quiet here. I could use for a really long nap after that. Oh, don't say quiet. And in walks Mr. Jensen. <laughs> you said it. You you made your own bed. You gotta lie it. Yeah, I didn't Mertrin, know that. <laughs> and Mertrin sort of looks and goes, Oh, dear God. Doc! He eats him at the doorway. I'm gonna see you in exam room too. Come here. Doc! And uh, once you get him in exam room too, he says, "Doc, I, I was kayaking on the holodeck again, and and this time th there was a rapid, and I, I I'm going to delete that program." <laughs> I did not intend this. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, uh, so, uh, sorry if that seems a little disproportionate, but uh, last time that person, last time that man was sick. We got booted 120 light years out towards the Galactic Rim. What is he? He 
Commander Morgan, he is a force of chaos and destruction more deadly than any Q. He's Jensen! <laughs> He's a menace! You're the captain. He's my menace! Stop it! And <laughs> to make things even better in this scene, uh, Andromeda's hand suddenly shoots up and grabs Mirthrin's arm. And uh, the voice comes out of her and she says, Where am I? When am I? Oh, Andromeda, are you awake? I see your arm moving. And the helmet kind of turns and says, Oh, okay, Havoc and Morgan are here. I repeat yes, my question. I fried where myself and... saving your damn life. Uh, sorry, more important, where and when where am I? All right, uh, uh, Andromeda, I believe? Yes. Yes. Uh, I am Captain Merthrin. You are in the sick bay of the Federation starship Amalthea in the Gamma Quadrant of the Milky Way Galaxy, approximately four years after the Adiona left for the Andromeda Galaxy. There's a pause, and then they say, "This I know this breaks some directive of yours, but I come with a warning." Oh. Are you at all familiar with the Temporal Cold War? Out of character, would Merthrin be familiar nope. with that? Nope. Nope, okay. I think actually Temporal... the only person who might have an inkling is Commander Morgan. Temporal Cold... I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, long Morgan, story short... Morgan and Beckett do. They were at the... Uh, yeah, I guess Beckett would know, uh, as would uh, basically anyone who was in the crossover would know. Um, but uh, Andromeda explains, it's, long story short, uh, 29th century, uh, multiple factions possess time travel trying to kill off or outright erase people from history and change the timeline. Maybe you should calm down with the wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff, Andromeda. Is this something uh, is this something I'm even cleared to know? It doesn't matter if you are or not. What matters is this. I come from the future and I'm here to find a sleeper agent. Would a sleep This may go a long way to explaining what happened to the Adiona. Yes, uh Unfortunately, the Adiona was destroyed. And after a second, it says, it was destroyed, right? No, uh, the it's Adiona not. itself is, has not been destroyed. Its crew, on the other hand. Well, uh, long story long short, story. Uh, the, the whole Adiona problem was instigated by forces that are on the other side of the Cold War. And now they're here to seal the deal, as it were. The deal being the destruction of the Adiona? Correct. But perhaps more relevant to you, Captain Merthrin, to make sure that the Gamma Vanguard never reaches home. So, okay. question, you're Andromeda, but not <laughs> our timeline's Andromeda. No, uh, shortly uh, during the battle, uh, I was rescued at the last moment before the ship uh, began to explode around me, and I found myself on a, uh, a time ship, as it were. I, I don't know how much I can say, but I was told of the situation and basically recruited Okay, well, here we go again. I look at Morgan. How many times does this make now? Too many. Too many. It was too many the first time. Andromeda, I don't think you, you know this, especially since they probably haven't told you, but we have... We have met... You know... Quite a few different... Oh time no, I, I fully problems. have memories of uh, my time on the Adiona. I know who you are. No, 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 no. That, that was an, another time. 
look at again it's important i i need to find the sleeper agent did do you have any klingons in your mist yes i uh, believe they do well, uh, we have an entire Klingon bird of praise worth of Klingons, plus my second in command, plus uh, probably a couple dozen Klingon officers distributed throughout the fleet. Uh, good. Okay, good. The Klingons were not removed from the timeline. Uh, oh, hold on. What? Back up a second. <laughs> Clear one. Oh my god. At that point in time away. We're doing what to the timeline? Please, let's continue. Oh, okay, okay. Important information. At the ship, the Adiona ship currently exists. These are currently the only two crew members that we know uh, have survived a temporal uh, explosion on their ship. And as for why they're here, shenanigans with an orb. Uh, what's what do we need to do? Uh, well, uh, the first and foremost is finding uh, this agent this uh sleeper agent uh they could literally be masquerading as anyone or anything uh, but it's imperative that we find them before the damage is done and this one here uh she points at havoc you must keep them alive for they hold uh important information and yeah as requested it is at this point that drake walks around the corner and walks into this situation <laughs> Uh, so first, so first off, off, your guys's operational security is about as bad as Beckett's. <laughs> you do realize we can hear you at the other end of sick bay, right? Tessie looks, looks around look, and I'm, waves. Look, I'm an engineer, not Starfleet intelligence. <laughs> well, in that case, um, out of character question during this uh, during this escapade. Would I have been uh, given any sort of just like you know low level command codes for for the ship, at least in terms of like doors and stations, not necessarily computer information? I think you've been given guest access at the very least. Yeah. Oh, okay, guest access. I can't do what I want to play with with guest access. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, what what are you trying to do? I wanted to um, among that. I I wanted to immediately just say you know computer deactivate all sensors and listening devices in this room and seal the doors oh yeah that that no would be definitely out. outside your realm of uh, yeah. of command so so on that same note which is why i was walking over here with drake uh captain would you like me to make it to where nobody can hear you uh, if you would and uh drake will give his normal command codes to uh silence the room and um and then look at Mirtha and do you want me to stay around or would you like me to go back and make sure that this uh, trill is not doing something unbecoming with our admiral? Uh, honestly, it might be worth bringing you in on this. If uh, we if we've got a mole on board, you'll be the person we need to find them. Well, I'm just going to say that if uh, a certain captain was here, he would point out that I was a mole. Uh... But sure, I'll listen in on the conversation. It takes Across some more the to black, find more. The next eyebrow just rises. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, I think this is because uh, we are kind of running up on our time limit. I think this is the perfect opportunity to pause and we will pick things back up in two weeks' time. So, uh, so, players, of uh, course, players. stick around for a little bit longer. But to anyone watching on Twitch, YouTube, or listening in on Podbean or iTunes, uh, thank you so much. And we will see these guys in two weeks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.